Good morning, everyone, and welcome to GenX Power's 1H24 Investor Webinar. My name is Saskia. I'm part of the Investor Relations team, and I will be hosting this call. With me today is GenX CEO Craig Francis and CFO Patrick McCarthy. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. A Q&A session will follow after the presentation. If you wish to ask a question, please type your question into the Q&A box and I will read it out. This call is being recorded. I will now turn the conference over to Craig. Thank you, Saskia, and good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning uh, to present our first half results for financial year 2024. Um, on our agenda today, we'll, we'll dive into the, the results themselves and give an overview of the operational and, and financial highlights um, for the business over the last six months. It's been a very busy period, so pleased to be pleased to give you that, that update um, on our activities. Uh, and then we'll go through and talk through each of the projects um, more in more detail, the committed portfolio being that the hydro project, um, the battery and the two solar farms, uh, our development pipeline, which is is growing and it's a, it's a very material part of, of the business and our, our next next phase of growth. And, and of course, um, a little bit on the industry backdrop and strategy before turning to some, some questions and answers. Um, but really just recapping uh, for those that are new to our webinar, um, and the story, uh, Gen X, we're, we're the only pure play uh, renewables and storage company listed on the ASX and really focused on renewable energy generation and st energy storage in Queensland and New South Wales. And that's across a range of technologies, all, all the mature technologies, wind, solar, battery, and pump storage hydro. At the moment, we've assembled a committed portfolio of, of over $1.1 billion that, that comprises 150 megawatts in operation and 250 megawatts in construction. The next phase of growth for the business is our 2.3 gigawatt pipeline, which we're looking to, to materially progress this, this or well, the rest of this financial year and, and into the rest of the calendar year. But our flagship project, as, as uh, most people who know GenX, is our pump storage hydro project, which will be the first pump storage hydro project to come online in more than four decades in Australia. And, and a key um, a key part of the platform and, and really positions us to play a leading role in, in continuing to support the energy transition here in Australia. This slide just gives a, a bit of an overview of the portfolio. Just to recap, uh, the, the company was founded with the Kidston Clean Energy Hub in North Queensland. That's the light green dot uh, where we have our pump storage hydro project, 250 megawatts for eight hours in construction. The stage one solar farm, Kidston, 50 megawatts, which has been operating since 2017, and our development project, Kidston Wind, which is looking to take an FID later this year. That's a 558 megawatt clean energy hub, really a, a, a global first of wind, solar, and, and hydro in a single location. Moving down the coast, uh, our Boulder Battery project came online at the end of last year. It's 50 megawatts for two hours. And then Southern Queensland, which is a key focus for us now, is the Bully Creek project where we have uh, multi-stage solar and battery opportunities. Stage one is looking like a 775 megawatt solar farm, looking to take an FRD on that project this year. And that will be followed by a large scale battery of 400 megawatts for four hours, looking to uh, take an FRD next year. New South Wales, we have our Gemalong solar project, which continues to operate well. That's been in operation for Three years now, um, two and a half years. Um, so, so really maturing that asset, and of course we have further opportunities at Bully Creek and at Boulderkerm, and, and looking, you know, to continue to build out the pipeline and, and play our part in this energy transition. But I might uh, hand over to Pat now, and, and he'll take us through um, the the financial and operational highlights for the the period. Have you, Pat? Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Greg. Uh, so, some of the highlights of the period are. Um, Kits and Solar uh, generated 58,080 megawatt hours, which is slightly down a par cost funding period uh, by 3%. Uh, pleasingly, Gemalong Solar Farm generated 56,026 uh, megawatt hours, which is up 12% in the par cost funding period. Um, and Bouldercom uh, battery came online, and since the orbiter came operational on the 10th of November, it's dispatched 3,221 megawatt hours. Uh, it's a pleasing start at Bolacom. Um, at the hydro, the main access tunnel is now complete, uh, significantly de-risking the project. Um, glad to report with zero loss time injuries and zero environmental incidents in the period. And we've had a busy period with our purchase agreements, signing a 25-year off-take agreement with Fortescue uh, subsidiary FFI, 
and uh, 25 year, uh, sorry, 15 year uh, offtake for kids and wind with Stanwell, 50% for generation, and 30% uh, offtake with Energy Australia, 10 years uh, again, kids and wind. Half year financials, um, total revenue period is down, uh, down to 10.41 million, and it's broken down into Kits and Solar 4.18, uh, Gemalong Solar Farm at 4.39, and please meet Bouldercom at 1.1 million since the orbit started on the 10th of November. Um, the revenue is down on prior cash funding period, uh, mainly due to um, electricity power prices uh, coming off a very abnormally high uh, pricing, uh, back to what we see is more normal pricing in the, in the longer term. Uh, group EBITDA of 2.8 million, uh, resulting in a net uh, loss after tax of 3.17 million. Um, our cash position is up to 75.4 million as we hold cash in reserve to see out uh, the hydro project. And that's an increase of 25.8 million um, from prior period end. So, Quickly review the balance sheet. The total assets has increased by 178 million, uh, predominantly down to Hydro, increasing by 145 million, and Bouldercom by 41 million. Uh, short term interest bearing loans and borrowings of 162.3 million is significantly up in prior year. And that is due to the operational solar farm loan and its subordinate loan, totaling 158 million, becoming due and payable within 12 months and hence becoming a short-term liability under accounting standards. And there's significant work on the way with that to refinance it uh, before 30 June, but we have until the end of this calendar year to, to complete the refinancing. Um, a long-term uh, interest borrowing loans have increased by 42 million um, as we progress to hydro plant in particular. Um, the net assets are down 14 million, um, and that's probably due to depreciation of the two solar farms. Uh, cash flow from operating activities is down 3.8 million, uh, probably due to the lower power prices, capex 71.8 million, which compared to prior corresponding period of 146 million reflects the, the uh, nearing completion of the hydro and Bouldercom um, effectively completed its construction. Um, the uh, yeah, EBITDA is down on, on prior year, and main steps for EBITDA being down are the revenue uh, being down 4.5 million, and uh, portfolio come coming online, uh, giving 1 million uplift on, on the revenue, and then the project side costs of, are up a million, and that's due to the Bolacom setup costs uh, becoming operational. Um, on the next slide, give you an overview of the um, financing facilities. Um, at the top of the page, we have um, the solar JS1 and JSP, which the red dot signifying that it's up for renewal at the end of this calendar year. But the notional tenor, as agreed with the banks, goes out to 2039. Uh, and we're in negotiations with the same group of lenders to extend that uh, financing period out for another uh, three to five years as is standard in, in the practice. The subordinate loan will also be wrapped up in that refinancing arrangement. Um, and we don't have any other uh, extensions on financing facilities coming up for a few years after that. I'll hand back to you, Greg. Thanks, Pat. Um... Just moving through now to talk about the committed portfolio, and this slide has been in our presentation for some time now, but what really excites me and, and the team here at GenX is that we are now very close to this, this cusp of, of, of step change in the business as our committed portfolio comes um, in, into operation. Uh, as this rel that relates to our 400 megawatts that's committed, 150 megawatts now in operation with Bouldercom coming online during the period. And obviously with the Kidston Pump Storage Hydro project still in construction and coming online um, for first revenues in, in the first half of next year. Um, really, though, we are on the cusp of this step change. You can see FY24, we do get our first contribution from 
boulder comb and, and first contribution from hydro in FY25 with our first full year of contribution in FY26. And that really gives us a very stable, long-term contracted portfolio of, of revenue streams um, to underpin the next phase of growth in the business. $95.6 million averaging uh, average revenue out to 2055, of which 83% is contracted and um, and with really solid EBITDA margins across all the technologies, really. Um, these, these projects are really high margin uh, once they're constructed and, and built and very little sustaining capex. So all that cash is available for us to service debt and, and obviously uh, equity. In terms of the hydro, it's been another big uh, period of, of progress. And, and you can see here in this picture, uh, we, we do like to put these presentations out and give the pictorial updates every every so often. And uh, you know the, the, the trans, transformation at Kidston is just... Um, it's just very rapid every time we, we, we update this, this uh, presentation. But just to recap, it's a 250 megawatt, eight hour storage project and will be the first pump storage hydro project 40 years. It's got a 30 year fixed price offtake with Energy Australia where they'll take the full profit and loss uh, exposure for the project and give us, give us a guaranteed fixed rental income. Underpinned by a, a very attractive long-term low interest rate NAIF loan of $610 million and, and our ARENA grant uh, funding as well, $47 million. And being constructed under a fixed price lump sum contract with John Holland and McConnell Dow. And, and as we sit here today, we, we're maintaining the, the guidance that will be energizing the project before the end of this calendar year, first revenues in the first half of next year. A bit of an update on construction progress uh, for the project. And really this is about the underground excavation status uh, as we sit here today, we are uh, really getting to the end of the underground. I, I sort of think about this project in, in four key, uh, key areas, uh, underground excavation being one, and we've been doing this since the beginning of 2022. So uh, very nearly at the end of the underground excavation, you can see the main access tunnel, all the construction edits, the water intake shafts and the, and the cable and ventilation shafts all completed, transform hall completed, and the powerhouse 97% complete. And I'll show you in a moment uh, the, the current status of that with a few photographic updates. And the tail race tunnels, the phase one back to the powerhouse. I can report this morning actually that uh, that this one of those has broken through into the powerhouse. The second is is ready and waiting for the, the powerhouse bench to catch up to, to complete that. But really the story here is underground excavation is very much nearing completion. The other three phases of the project I mentioned, uh, the surface works, the dam, the transmission piece, and then of course the powerhouse fit out works, which are the main focus of this calendar year. Some new photos, um, pretty impressive. You can see there on the left, the status of the powerhouse excavation. There is one bench to go known as bench six, and that will take that red dotted line down to the very bottom where the sumps from the pump turbines um, will, will collect the water that that's, that feeds through uh, from the system. That, that drilling is now underway and that will be complete uh, in the next quarter, which will be a major milestone for the project and, and for Gen X. And you can see in the photo on the right that uh, that's that aligns with the, the chart on the left. So you can see that we're now down bench five completed and, and that's a flat, very neat looking powerhouse and we've just got one more to go down below but look the big exciting piece here is is we're now starting to see the mechanical and electrical fit out works commence with the the first major piece of equipment being the crane beam uh having been installed over the last couple of weeks you can see that the, the process it gets it, it's comprised of two of these giant yellow beams um undertaken taken underground by these self-propelled vehicles each of those see that that vehicle on the left there each of those wheels can can turn 360 degrees so it's a pretty fascinating piece of equipment taken all the way underground um and then uh, and installed up on the the railing um up, up uh, the ceiling and, and you can see that on the right that's now fully installed that beam and and the, the crab which sits on top of it which has a, a pulley and, and will will do all the lifting uh of, of the major equipment that will run along the top of the powerhouse for construction lifting all the heavy equipment into place and remain for operations to, to undertake the, the major fit out works when they're required um, over time. But uh, a big milestone, we've got our big crane beam underground and, and that's that marks the commencement of the, the mechanical electrical fit out. So um, yeah, some great pictures and almost coming live. This was just, um, just last week. So uh, yeah, exciting stuff. 
Um, the other major pieces of the the project, the dam is complete, save for the intake canal, which which uh, will, will be completed last as they as they complete the the works around the portals for the the water intake shafts. Uh, but we are now complete. All the line is down for the bulk of the dam, and that's enabled the filling to commence. And you can see now that the water level is really rising there in that photograph on the left. Starting to get our islands at, at Kidston Advisors Dam, which is um, which is great to see. That's still got a, a, a fair way to go um, in terms of volume, but um, but I think that will be largely done um, over the next quarter. So so exciting um, progress there. And really, what's what's stark is seeing the, the water level lower in the Eldridge Pit. And the other piece is the transmission, and that's progressing really well. Transmission comprises two substations: one at Kidston. Orem Field or K2X as we call it, and the other at Mount Fox, and then a 185 kilometer transmission line uh, connecting the two. And, and pleasingly, uh, the, the substation at Mount Fox is complete. Project completion has been granted. Uh, K2X is on track for completion before the middle of this year, and the stringing and the, and the tower erection is going really well. Despite the wet season, um, all the foundations were, were poured before the wet season commenced, and, and we're now in the process of, of um, or power links in the process of uh, assembling towers, putting them up, and starting to string the conductor, and that's all all tracking well. The key risk for GenX is the interface with the EPC requirement to have the high voltage connection, but that's um, that's all looking really comfortable at the moment. So, uh, very exciting progress on the project, uh, and continuing to track towards energization before the end of this calendar year, and first uh, revenues in in the first half of twenty five. Another major milestone for the business was getting the Bouldercombe battery project online. Uh, and it's now fully operational, 50 megawatts for two hours uh, with a 20 year warranty from Tesla, a 20 year O&M arrangement from Tesla. And as we all know, the Tesla offtake structure. And really what we've tried to tried to do uh, here in, in this slide is, um, is try and give a bit more explanation as to how that offtake works for, for those that aren't familiar. Tesla is our offtaker for a period of eight years and they operate the plant using their proprietary auto bidder technology, which has been operating in Australia since about 2017. And really successfully, it regularly achieves you know, sort of 80 to 90 percent of, um, of the performance you'd expect in terms of maximizing revenues if you had a crystal ball. So, so we, we think that's a pretty good result and, and very keen to monetize um, that for ourselves. So the way it works is Tesla will operate the plant to maximize revenues across energy and the 10 frequency control ancillary services mar markets. And they'll also provide us with a floor guarantee. In exchange for that, we'll share the upside above that floor guarantee uh, should, should they meet it um, every, every quarter. And that chart on the right shows how our theoretical um, quarter, the revenue is divided up. The dark green is the is the guaranteed revenue to Gen X. Everything above that is, is what the plant makes um, above that amount and, and we would share with Tesla the blue and retain the light green. Um, so a, a neat structure that fully aligns the incentives between us, which uh, we think is um, is a really neat way for us to get some downside protection, but also give um, a very strategic exposure to the underlying dynamics of energy storage. And just a bit of an update on the first quarter of operations, given it was our first quarter, we thought it, it warranted um, its own slide. But as we know, we had that fire event back in September and the focus then quickly turned on getting the project up and running as soon as possible. We're very pleased to commence operations under the offtake agreement with Tesla on the 10th of November using up to 38 megapacks, of well, it's 40 megapacks um, at the site. Um, the two were damaged in the fire. Those two replacement megapacks were installed, tested and commissioned with full operation commencing from the 12th of December. We reported $1.1 million in net revenue for that period from, from the 10th of November through to the 31st of December. However, we experienced a, a number of outages uh, during that period as we were um, in the site, replacing the mega packs, preparing the site for, for that um, piece of work as well. So the read across is that um, the majority of that revenue relates to the 19 days of operation from the 12th of December. <clears throat> Um, but averaging $341 of net revenue per megawatt hour discharged, which um, which which is reasonably in line with our expectations. And look, a bit of a trading update. The market conditions in Queensland 
have been um, quite positive into January this year and, and certainly continuing into February. In January, we saw 74 pricing intervals greater than $1,000 and 31 pricing intervals greater than $10,000 a megawatt hour, which is where this battery really plays and it can make um, huge amounts of, of revenue, of its annual revenue um, in, in very short periods. And couple, coupling that, um, we've got average charging prices lower than $50 a megawatt hour. So really good energy arbitrage um, market dynamics at the moment in Queensland, which the battery is um, well positioned to capitalise on. Turning to the development portfolio now, and it was, as Pat said, it was a pretty busy period for us with, with a number of our development projects, but Kidston Wind uh, saw some significant milestones just, just to recap, we're developing this project 50-50 with our partners, J Power, and it's going to be the third stage of the Kidston Clean Energy Hub, combining solar, pump storage hydro and wind all at a single location. A 250 megawatt, 58 megawatts size to use the spare capacity on the transmission line, which the hydro is underpinning. Um, so so, that, so it's, um, it'll be using the spare capacity of that line. It's, we've selected Goldwind as the wind turbine supplier, and they'll be supplying up to 43 uh, six megawatt turbines at the site and targeting the facility to be operational in late 26. But the big milestones were on the offtake side where we've really de-risked the delivery of the project. We've finalized our offtake structure. We're gonna have 80% of the project contracted and 20% will be exposed to the spot market. 15 years with Stanwell for 50% of that project output and 10 years with Energy Australia for 30% of the project output, which is a nice blend, two very high quality counterparties and great to be doing some repeat business with Energy Australia as well, who are obviously there with the Hydro project. The development activities are all tracking well, uh, targeting a final investment decision uh, before the end of this calendar year. So that's, that's very much a firm target of the business and um, keeping us very busy. The other development project that we're looking to take to a final investment decision this year is the 775 megawatt Bully Creek Stage 1 solar project, again being developed in partnership with J-Power 50-50. The site, as, as you might recall, we acquired it 18 months ago. It has a good solar resource and a good proximity to load centres in, in Brisbane, Toowoomba, and the regional uh, reference node in, in um, just outside of Noosa. Um, and all its planning and, and cultural heritage approvals received. So in a very advanced stage, ready for us to take um, take to, to a, a, a real project with a final investment decision. Big activities in the period were the signing of our first offtake for the project, 25 years with Fortescue for 337.5 megawatts. And we're continuing discussions with other counterparties for another offtake of similar size to, to underpin that 775 megawatt uh, first stage solar farm. The other big milestone was we've selected our EPC contractor with PCL Constructors. They're a large Canadian outfit, privately owned, um, doing an excess of $6 billion in revenue a year. So very reputable outfit specialising in solar. And we're now working with them under an early contractor involvement arrangement to scope up um, our, our fixed price lump sum contract for a final investment decision later this year. So, so some pretty key milestones and we'll continue, be continuing to de-risk this project ahead of that, that uh, milestone. Just before I move on to the next slide, um, just that chart on the right, just to give an idea of the site layout. This is the 775 megawatts AC of solar panels. It's about a gigawatt DC of, of, of solar panels at the site. There's a corridor running north-south through the site. That's the Queensland, New South Wales interconnector and that connects into Bully Creek substation uh, about four or five kilometers north of the site. We're gonna have our own substation at the site. That's the green dot there, green square there in the top corner that will connect all of the stages of Bully Creek uh, into, the, into the main power link transmission network. And you can see there in the red is where we're gonna locate the first stage battery uh, when we get that project up and running. So just on the battery, uh, as the second stage of the project, but, but obviously the first stage of, of battery technology there will be 400 megawatts for four hours. Again, 50-50 with J-Power. We're starting to uh, really ramp up activities on this project alongside uh, the solar farm. And really we're, we're focused on, on this, you know, benefiting from the strategic location right on this interconnector with Queensland and New South Wales. We think that has a lot of value for portfolios and also for network services. So looking to monetize that in the development of this project. Um, busy quarter, last quarter, uh, we, we 
uh, undertook the tendering process for the project and we, we're starting to work through that and, and should have some feedback on that in coming months. And we're really continuing our uptake discussions to underpin uh, how this project is, is contracted, which is the most interesting thing for these projects. We think we're going to have multiple revenue streams uh, underpinning the project. And we've also started the grid connection process with our connection inquiry to PowerLink. So this is all starting to ramp up. Uh, obviously, we've got our, a busy year this year with Kidston Wind, Bully Creek Solar and that small uh, matter of pump storage hydro that are all being delivered. Um, but next year will be uh, a real focus on getting this battery project into construction so that it's um, ready to start storing and, and generating energy um, in sort of 2026, 2027. In terms of these, these projects, particularly Kidston Wind and Bully Creek Solar, we, we are very much developing them um, with a very deliberate strategy for our equity funding requirements, deliberately focusing on very large projects. These projects combined are in excess of $2 billion of, of project capex. We've obviously got a 50-50 partnership with J-Power, but, but they are very large and that's, that's very deliberate because it gives us the flexibility of funding them um, either at TOPCO level or, or at the project level. The, the strategy is really focused on maximising the, the benefits of project finance and, and, and really to do that, it's, it's putting together high quality projects with high quality stakeholders and with Fortescue, Stanwell, Energy Australia, we think we've done that as well as uh, PCL and Goldwind on the construction side. So high quality projects will be highly sought after by the banks, but also by, um, by potential equity partners. Uh, and we've, we're very much now focused on um, running the debt and equity process commencing um, pretty soon in, in the next quarter for, for Bully Creek Solar and, and probably Kids to Win shortly thereafter uh, to, to secure the project finance for the projects and also to look to secure an equity partner at the project level. What this will do is it'll enable us to earn a, a development premium that will allow us to carry a material interest in the project. We'll also earn management fees out of the project structure and it will help manage the requirements of our equity um, equity check for the project. So what we're saying here is we've 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 got flexibility on how we fund these projects and we're not reliant solely on, on shareholder funds to do so, which I think is very important um, for us as we advance these projects through to a final investment decision to have this flexibility. and. We expect more news as these processes uh, kick off um, in the coming weeks and months. Just on the industry, this slide's been in our deck for, for some time, but I think it's, it's very well known and certainly it's in the news every, every day uh, that this energy transition is accelerating uh, and it needs to accelerate the, the there's clear alignment from federal and state governments at all levels, from industry, from financial markets, insurers, that we need to decarbonise the, the economy on a global basis. And, and Gen X's strategy here is to, is to do our bit. What this means is, is the, the rapid retirement of coal and the replacement of, of coal with wind and solar generation capacity. But it also means there's a, there's a significant need for energy storage to balance that wind and solar capacity to ensure that we have reliable grid um, going forward as part of the transition. For Gen X, this is really uh, gives us an immense opportunity to further expand our portfolio, but also to play our part in the energy transition. And we see this uh, translating into significant demand for offtakes from our project, uh, competitive debt and equity funding, as, as there is a growing demand to get exposure to this sector and limited opportunities to do so. And uh, we, we think the business where it's at, 400 megawatts committed, a very big and high quality pipeline and, and working with very high quality partners, we think we're really well positioned to capitalise on that opportunity. So our strategy, as, as, as we know, it's 150 megawatts operating base and executing on that, on the rest of the committed portfolio, which is just one more project to get into operation, to get 400 megawatts uh, operation in operation. And that provides a really stable and long-term, highly certain contracted revenue base. The next phase of growth is really delivering on this pipeline that we've started to pull together now. And, and that starts with Kidston Wind and Bully Creek Solar and, and getting those projects into construction sometime uh, this calendar year and really leveraging the relationships that we've established over, over the years uh, as we've developed this portfolio with, with very high quality counterparties, leveraging those to, to get these projects uh, committed 
And then we look further beyond uh, those projects to the Bully Creek Battery and to further expansion opportunities at Bully Creek, uh, Baldicombe. We also have opportunities there as well as other opportunities in the national electricity market that we're continuing to explore. So just to recap, we've assembled a very diverse uh, renewable energy generation and storage portfolio, $1.1 billion committed portfolio, which is fully funded and growing. And we see significant upside from this 2.3 gigawatt development pipeline that we've assembled in wind, solar, and in batteries. Really what we're looking to do is leverage this, this proven track record we have now with, with the projects we've assembled to date and the strong relationships we've established with these very high quality counterparties for this next phase of growth. And we started to do that, as you've seen, with Fortescue, uh, Stanwell Energy Australia signing up for offtake agreements from our two projects. The portfolio we've assembled, and we're looking to take this, this through to the development portfolio as well, is, is one that's, that's highly certain. It's got a high level of contracted revenue, which gives um, a very stable base for us, for our business to continue to grow and, and provide um, you know, a high quality revenue stream for us to potentially consider dividends to shareholders uh, down the track. But we also retain a merchant exposure and that's very important for us. It gives a very strategic uh, exposure to the upside um, economics of, of both the renewable energy sector and also um, the storage sector, which we see is, is very attractive and we're seeing that play out with the, the dynamics observed for, for Baldicum. We continue to have a very strong commitment to um, the communities in, in which we operate, the environment and, and our Indigenous partners in, our, in all our projects. And that's very much at the forefront of everything we do in our business and, and looking to continue to, um, to maintain our focus on, on that commitment. And uh, as I mentioned at the outset, we remain the only uh, pure play renewable energy and storage company listed on the ASX. Um, so really not many other ways uh, for investors to get exposed to this very exciting sector. And we're continuing to build on um, track record we've established to, to provide the next uh, step change in growth for the business. Might finish there and, uh, and then uh, head over for Q&A. Great, thank you, Craig and Pa. We've now entered the Q&A session. Please type your question into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and I will read it out. The first question is, is Kidston Hydro progressing on track? Yeah, look, I think um, the pictorial update this uh, this quarter was, I think, personally very exciting. Um, we're, we're now seeing the conclusion of the underground excavation phase uh, is very much in front of us now we, we can see the end uh, and that's that's a very big milestone for us as we as we move out of that uncertain you know always underground um, excavation and drilling and geotechnical risk is has a degree of uncertainty but as we near the completion of that we really put all of that behind us the dam is is largely complete and transmission is all progressing well so it's really over now to to the contractor and um, and the fit out of the the powerhouse uh, cavern and 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 the, the facility itself and then the commissioning of the facility and um you know we're continuing to play our part to support in that process and and as we've said energization remains on track for uh the end of this year and and first revenues in the first half of next year so i'm um, very much looking forward to delivering on that great thank you craig we've had a few questions through regarding boulder comb the first is, over what duration has the Baldacombe battery produced the 1 million revenue and what is the Genix take-home given the Tesla relationship? Yeah, I can I can take that one. Uh, so we, we did disclose the $1.1 million of revenue uh, from the period of the 10th of November to the 31st of December. That's when the project has been operating under the offtake agreement. Prior to that, it was in construction and we earned some pre-commissioning revenues. Um, that <laughs> just lost the lights in this room. Um, that the 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 rev, that one point one million dollars principally relates to the period when we were operating at full capacity. As I said, there were a few outages, um, which were reasonably substantial in that period from the tenth of November to the twelfth of December. So the vast majority was um, was relating to that nineteen days. We haven't given the precise detail, um, and uh, I think that's probably the, the limit of it. We're going to disclose at the moment. In terms of the arrangement with Tesla, uh, again, we haven't given that breakdown of, of what's payable to Tesla um, as part of it. It's, it's commercial in confidence. So um, I think there may, there may be some more uh, detail on that in our full year results. And we've got a bit uh, 
bit more sort of revenue on the, uh, in the accounts and and obviously the payments to Tesla will be reflected in our in our full year accounts um, once we've we've had a, a couple of quarters of operation. Thanks, Craig. Another on Boulder Co. Is the quarterly Tesla upside revenue shared 50-50? Uh, yeah, we haven't disclosed the the terms of the Tesla uh, arrangement, the upside sharing arrangement, but I can confirm it's not 50-50. Thank you. Boulder Co. battery revenue over 19 days is averaging 34% per atom return on an outlay of 59 million and conditions of trade in Jan have improved. Is the expansion of Bouldercombe the most achievable and profitable next investment for Gen X? Uh, well, I might make two comments there. On the, the first being um, the read across for uh, $1.1 million in 19 days and, and annualising that out. I think what, what we expected with this project and what I think is, is the reality is these revenues are going to be lumpy. You're not going to get consistent um, revenues in the same way as a wind farm or a solar farm, because we do have these big price spikes, which drive um, real high revenue earning events. And 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 then you obviously have um, days where there's there's little um, arbitrage in the market. You know, those, those cloudy, cool, cool days in Queensland, you get very little arbitrage. So uh, the revenues will be lumpy um, over the long term. I think that's our expectation. And we've certainly seen that uh, day to day in the, the batteries performance. Uh, BBP2 is probably further down the pipeline than um, the two projects we have in front of us in Kidston Wind and, and Bully Creek. While it is it is um, a bit more straightforward being uh, on a site where we've already got the land and the planning approvals in place, there is still the procurement process. There's the grid connection process that all needs to be worked through. So that's something we're turning our attention to um, over the coming period to, to really bring that into the pipeline, but, um, but our focus remains on Kidston Wind and Bully Creek as the next projects to be committed into the portfolio. Thanks, Greg. There's a mention of going concern uncertainty in the accounts. What does this relate to? Yeah, I can, I can take that one. Um, that's the refinancing of the uh, facility uh, at the, the operational solar farms. So currently we've got three lenders in that facility and uh, we're continuing to pay, make our payments as the June payable. Uh, we've engaged with the three lenders. They're all keen to extend the period of the loan, which is due to expire in December of this year. Um, it's typical in project financing that you would have a five-year tenor on a loan. And the reason why you do that is because you get cheaper financing when you go for five-year tenor or even three-year tenor, rather than going for 10 to 20-year tenor at the outset. Um, so that process is on the way. Engage with the lenders. Uh, they're happy to participate in refinancing. And we hope to complete by 30 of June. Thanks, Pat. The next question is, could you please provide an EBITDA breakdown across the solar farms, BBP and corporate costs? Yeah, I don't think we've, uh, we've disclosed that, right? We haven't no. disclosed that previously. No. I can give kind of a variation from the prior uh, corresponding period. Um, so Kitson 1 uh, revenues are down uh, 2.2 million, uh, Gemlong Solar down 2.5. Again, that's due to the um, power prices reducing from the abnormally high prices in FY23. Um, Bordercom coming online, giving an uplift of, of 1.2 million. And the project side costs increased by a million, predominantly down to Bordercom becoming operational and set up costs on site Bordercom. Thanks, Pat. Next question is, why does KS1 have an average price under the floor price contracted by the Queensland government? Oh, I can take this one if you like, Pat. Um, yeah, we, we, we dealt with this, um, this in, in discussions after our last quarterly uh, where we, we did see the impact of KS1's revenues um, you know, quite pronounced. And, and really the... Um, what we saw in, in the last quarter in particular was was quite uh, persistent intraday price volatility. And that saw uh, quite quite long, you know, frequent recurring instances of negative pricing during um, the daytime. Uh, we've had this in the past. It's not a new thing. Um, and, and so you've probably seen, investors have probably seen that the average revenue for case one does move around a little bit, um, plus or minus $88. And that's that's uh, one of the factors that contributes to that. 
notwithstanding that the project is contracted to Queensland Government under a long-term PPA. Uh, however, this last period saw us um, curtailed a little, uh, uh, quite significantly uh, as a result of this um, this negative pricing, what we call e economic curtailment, where you switch off at zero. However, what we've been able to do is to optimise our bidding so that below zero, we're able to monetize the creation of, of a large-scale generation certificate, which has value typically around $45, $50. And so uh, the, the reported revenues are a blend of the PPA revenue and the, the, the intervals where we've uh, been able to monetize the, the LGC, but but obviously we don't receive the full $88. So that's had a downward impact on the average price received over the quarter. Going forward, um, you know, I think we are, this this market is shifting very dynamically and very rapidly. And certainly we've not seen pricing as as persistent in the past as we had the last um, the last quarter in particular. But I think we we sort of look forward and, and we don't see this being a, a regular feature in Queensland, we uh, certainly are, are, are recognizing that there's at least half a gigawatt of storage that's going to be on online uh, in the form of batteries um, next spring, which is going to be sitting there absorbing the daytime pricing and putting upward pressure back on pricing. And this market is continuing to shift very dynamically. So that there's a there's a whole host of uh, other battery and storage projects that are committed that are going to be contributing to this. So uh, our view at the moment is it's a one-off um, and and it should be much more benign uh, this coming spring, but obviously uh, it's one of the features of this, this energy transition that we're seeing. Thanks, Craig. Next question is, could you please talk to any potential role that the capacity investment scheme may play in future operations? Yeah, sure. We're, we're yet to see um, yeah, significant further detail on the, the announcement by Minister Bowen uh, late last year. But we do, and we don't think the capacity investment scheme is going to be the only source of, of offtake for projects and, and going to drive out the private sector. We certainly see a role for the private sector alongside uh, the, the government uh, in, in terms of uh, delivering this capacity. Um, I think we, we see opportunity for our portfolio in terms of providing a price floor for our projects, which will support uh, certain levels of, of debt finance and, and could sit alongside other private off-takers as well. So certainly something we'll be exploring. I don't think there's a Queensland option um, slated as yet, but uh, we expect to, uh, to hear more on that as the year progresses and, um, and we'll be actively participating uh, our projects into those processes. Great, thanks, Craig. We've just got one more question which is Kidston is expected to be higher solar radiation than Gemalong. Is self curtailment impacting Kidston and to what extent? Um, self curtailment, I, I, I think that might relate to economic curtailment, um, but I'll just have to make that assumption. Um, yeah, look, I think we, you know, the, historically the solar farms um, have exhibited this, this sort of feature where they earn about the same amount of revenue, Gemalong, uh, fewer megawatt hours, but higher pricing being fully uncontracted and Kidston uh, higher generation and, and uh, at a lower, lower fixed price under the offtake agreement. Um, Gemalong has a very seasonal generation profile as well. So you find um, that really accelerates uh, into the summer and then tapers off quite, quite distinctly in the winter. Uh, both solar farms have experienced this negative pricing that we've been seeing, which is where you, you sort of see uh, economic curtailment um, occur. Um, case, uh, case one has probably been impacted more significantly would be would be a fair comment. Uh, however, there's a whole other, uh, range of other factors. There's uh, network curtailment. There is uh, irradiance varying quite significantly across the um, two portfolios. Remember case one is in the tropics, so it's affected by the wet season. And, and so that wet weather when it started to roll in in December also played, played a part. So a whole number of factors, but um, certainly economic curtailment is is one that affected both solar farms and, and, and fair to say that uh, case one probably more so than the general one. Great, thanks, Craig. There are no further questions. Please don't hesitate to email if you do have any follow-ups following the webinar. I'll now hand back to Craig for closing remarks. Well, thanks, Saskia. And uh, yeah, look, just a general comment in closing. Uh, I'd just like to thank all of our investors, uh, shareholders and, and other stakeholders uh, for their ongoing support and a very exciting time for the business. Uh, there's a lot happening uh, on our 
on delivering uh, the hydro project and, and look forward to giving more updates on that um, over the coming months and as and certainly on our development portfolio as we take these big projects through to a final investment decision later this year so uh, look forward to to um, sharing updates on those um, over the coming weeks and months great thanks craig that concludes our webinar for today thank you for participating you may now disconnect